Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are looking at another potential client's email who once again has contacted me about the JD Garage plans that he's purchased. I'm just going to read to you here the email. Good evening, Vince. Thank you for your speedy reply. As I'm ready, already about $900 into the JD Garage bill for materials, are there any plans out there that you recommend that uh, would use your controllers? Once again, he goes into detail. I think him and I are capable of putting the chassis together, but the more I research the electronics, we are definitely in over our heads. Although I'm about $900 into the JD Garage bill for parts, if I needed to purchase another set of plans that would build us a better table, I would be willing to look at them. Well, once again, I don't know how many of you, even myself, would want to lose $900. That's ridiculous. Uh, please excuse the thunder. But one thing you guys need to understand is that if you purchase these plans and you're not happy at the time of purchase, ask for a refund. I mean, many of you may do that. I don't know. I know that sounds really obvious, but for some reason, this keeps happening and I keep getting contacted. Um, that being said, I'm going to come over here and I want to discuss selecting the proper cable drag chain. Now, why am I doing that? Um, I'm doing that because, number one, Ryan McKenzie, who actually wrote this article for Instructables, it put together this article and it's fantastic for many of you who really want to understand the details surrounding selecting the proper cable chain. And why are these details important? Because naturally we don't want internal fracturing of our leads that are carrying all our signals and power to all of our components of our CNC robot. Case in point, we have a, another video here from our buddy over at JD Garage, him and Jackson. I know the other guy's name's Jackson because I was corrected when I went on Go Green Guys CNC channel. And I want you guys to hear his elaborate discussion on proper details when selecting a cable chain, or at least what they, these guys came up with. Check this out. And this is a, this cable chain that we're calling out of the plans is a 50 millimeter wide cable chain. Now this cable chain will accept all the wires for the motors, the limits. It will accept all the wires for the motors, the limit switches, and everything else, but based on what? What detail? If you guys watch this video and you want to watch it from the whole beginning, um, he's not discussing what cable size he's using in this particular video. He may have prior, but I'm going to tell you right now, there is much more detail than just arbitrarily selecting a cable chain. 50 millimeters is under two inches, 25.4 millimeters equals one inch, so it's slightly under two inches, and once again, you have to be very, very certain of the size cables you're implementing inside your cable chain. Now, as we go through this video, he then shows you, we'll do it over here, to show you placement, they start running their standard uh, wires and cables through this chain. And the thing to keep in mind is he says he's just implementing this because they didn't want to run the proper, uh, they call it flex cable. It's actually called ultra flex cable. You want to make sure that the cables you use are rated ultra flex. That's a fact. If we don't use that, you will have cables that break. He said it was too cold in the shop to do this correctly. Either way, he's filming it. I have no idea why they put this on camera. But if we look over in other areas on this video, see if I can come up right here. You can see how he has these bends of cables going inside the cable chain. And you can see how tight this is right here. If you look and you see your cable chain is that tight and when that ca cable chain becomes active, you have any sense of friction whatsoever. Over time, you're going to have exterior casing degradation and you're also going to have more friction on the internal lead structure. Keep that in mind on whatever cables you use. Just because you select ultra flex cable does not mean that you can just arbitrarily stick it and you know jam it into whatever cable chain you use because a vendor who once again doesn't understand all the gravity of the details he's explaining says it's okay to do. And in this situation, you could see the bends here we have and everything we have going on. This is ridiculous. Chain and how nice and neat it's ran yeah it's neat yeah. and it's nicely ran and you could see everything over here but what we need to be more concerned about is how much friction is generated when that cable chain is flexed and also looking at the compression area of where the chain is crunched. If it's very tight and we exceed that, that MBR rating of your cable, which you all should be aware of, you are going to be in dire straits. So once again, 
pay attention to every detail. And before you spend your money, contact people that are validated.